go ahead and get started. I was hoping for oh, 100 participants is when I said we'd get started, which is a little less than half of our registrants. Our numbers are still ticking up. So go ahead and uh, get this going. I want to let you all know about a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we are recording the session. It will be sent out to uh, anyone who registered for the event. And captioning is available via the Zoom uh, closed caption button. And we encourage the use of chat for questions. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I want to introduce myself. I am Jennifer Coleman. I'm the director of the Student Success Suite at the California Community Colleges Technology Center. The Student Success Suite is comprised of our um, onboarding and matriculation education technology tools, which include OpenCCC, CCC Apply, and MyPath, and the various other uh, connected applications that are associated with the student onboarding process. So I will be assisted today by Mary Wales and Patty Donahue, who are part of our enabling services and support team, and Jane Linder, who is our product manager for our student success suite. We're going to cover a couple of uh, things generally with regards to the CCC Apply Report Center and get into some details around our student, success, student satisfaction survey and some enrollment management uh, reports that you might be interested in. We will also give a little highlight on our uh, applied production release that's happening on Friday. And again, we encourage everyone to utilize the chat for any questions. We will answer them as we go and we will also have time at the end to wrap up anything we haven't yet covered. So welcome, thank you for taking the time this afternoon to be part of our webinar. We do offer these on about a monthly basis. And so we encourage you to continue participating and to share the information covered here with your colleagues. We will also present the contact information for next steps if you will need it. And uh, we encourage you to reach out after the presentation as well. So go ahead and get started. Um, one of the things that uh, people may or may not realize is the sheer wealth of data that is available from CCC Apply. So what, what's possible? Well, a lot of colleges utilize the data for things like checking on application download. What did a student submit? They might be stuck. A student might be stuck in the process. A college downloads the application, helps them out, gets them moving along the process. Also, um, more recently with a spring release, is the ability to reach out to applicants who haven't yet completed or submitted the application. We're gonna cover that a little bit. The big thing that we are highlighted in our announcement for this webinar was what do applicants have to say about the application process? Are there things that could be improved from a global perspective, from a local college perspective? And then what trends are we seeing? What are we seeing statewide? And what about at your college? I can tell you that our application numbers are actually up which is a bit surprising given that enrollments are significantly down in some cases, and we are not sure why. We've been having conversations um, at various uh, levels to, to try and figure that out. And you know, unfortunately, it's a national issue right now that everyone's trying to, to come up with a solution for, but hopefully we'll be able to provide some insights into how to get some data to, to track locally what's going on for you. Um, the other piece that always comes up with CCC Apply is how long does it take a student to complete the application? Research actually says that it's a faster process than it was a couple of years ago, but anecdotally, uh, hearing from some of our counselors and other representatives of our students, some student groups still struggle. And so, you know, what is the actual time to completion for your, your college? That's something else you'll be able to look at. So there really is a lot of data that exists. We're here to help you unlock it and utilize it for some of the enrollment management um, challenges that you may be facing right now. So specifically, there are some post-submission data sources that are available to your, each of you at your colleges. Um, the CCC Apply Report Center is what we will be focused on today. And then we have the direct data delivery via either the download client or superglue that, that you have access to locally once that's delivered. I will give you a little sneak peek and tell you that um, the download client will be going away next year sometime. We will have a number of announcements about that in favor of the direct delivery of data via Superglue. Uh, we're finding it to be a much more efficient and effective method for data delivery. So we're moving in that direction. Stay tuned for more information on that front. We also have our CCC data warehouse report server um, that's available. 
And I will say that depending on your role at the college, you may or may not have access to each of these data sources, um, but our focus today will be on the CCC Apply Report Center. So I'm gonna turn it over, I believe to Mary, who's going to talk a little bit about accessing the Report Center and how to get set up. Alrighty, so hello everyone. I'm Mary Wales, I am a support engineer. Um, and I've worked with many of you through the years, but how you get access to the CCC Apply Report Center is um, you generally at your college, and it's usually based in either the IT department or the A&R department, a person who manages the account for your college. So if you are um, looking to get to the CCC Apply Report Center, um, there's a couple of places for you to start. Reach out to your a &R department because if they are not the people who manage those accounts, they can certainly tell you who at your IT department to contact. The list um, that Jennifer has on this slide, the, the URL, is, shows both the production and the pilot um, report center and administrator URLs for your college. So again, this is um, a pretty generic slide, but the, the picture that's on the right-hand side is what the CCC Apply Report Center main page will look like once your account is set up. There you go, Jennifer, next slide. All righty, so um, because we have a public reports repository, there is a number of templates there for your staff to use that um, meet a number of the questions that you have. If you have international applications, if you have um, California Promise Grant applications, and we have a slew of application reports. So today we're really gonna take a look at the in progress or unsubmitted application data for outreach for your college so that you can start the process of reaching out to people who may be having some issue completing their application. Anything next? All right, so that is a screenshot. When, I, when you log into the Report Center, there's a number of ways for you to get to the data. I typically suggest that you use the View Repository, which is circled up at the top, and then go to the public folders. And as you can tell, you can have application lookup reports. You can have actually reports that have to do with all of your applications, not just looking up an individual application. Then you have BOG fee. We didn't change it to California Promise Grant, but those are the California Promise Grant um, reports and views. And the school reports. So if you're looking for information about a particular high school or college, either in the state of California or from outside, those school reports is where you would go to look. Any questions? I see a chat there. Okay, so I think just to Mary's point about school information, there are a lot of pieces of data that could help formulate the puzzle that is the current scenar uh, scenario that we face with enrollment right now. So we wanted to provide you with what public reports are available as ready to use and um, easy to use. And then there are, there's always the option for customizing some of these depending on your um, interest and, and what exactly you're looking for. For the first focus in terms of our publicly accessible reports, we're going to move to the student sur satisfaction survey data. Um, and talk a little bit about the survey that students see within the application process. So after submission and prior to closing out of the apply process, students are presented with three questions. And I'm gonna turn it over to Patty. You can see a screenshot there of what apply actually looks like. And I'm gonna turn it over to Patty Donahue to talk a little bit about the survey and how to leverage that data. Okay, um, let's see, uh, is it okay if I share my screen? Yes, just let me stop share, hold on just one minute. Okay, 
So let's see. Okay, let's try this again. Sorry, hold on a sec, guys. Got to get my screen actually there. Um, okay, so we're, we're going to talk about the uh, student satisfaction survey. And I thought it would be helpful if you've never seen it. Uh, of course, it timed out on me uh, right away. Um, but to kind of show you where it is, so um, I'm going into the pilot application. This will just take five seconds to show you what the student sees. Uh, the pilot is a mirror of the production application, um, but just to stay out of production right now, I've got this application queued up. Um, so the student would have gone through this application. They're on the very last page, and this is the standard app, and they're about to you know, consent. Um, this is the consent to release their information and then submit their application. So this very last page of the app and submit it. And as soon as they submit it, they're going to get a confirmation screen. You know, be able to get there. There we go. Um, great job, Patricia. You did it. You submitted your application. It gives them a little bit of info. Um, and then they continue. And the first, the next thing they'll see is the student satisfaction survey. And it's just three questions. Come on. So I'm trying to keep my uh, camera off to save bandwidth. Oh, okay, well, that's wonderful. Let's see. Sorry, I did practice this and it worked. Um, so let's go to that screenshot because this is basically what it, exactly where I was heading right after that, um, which let me make that a little bit bigger. Let's see, so this screenshot right here, and we'll, we'll zoom it back down after. But they basically see three questions. Um, would you, uh, you know, how was your experience? Let me see, just a little bit bigger. How was your experience? Would you rate your experience, um, you know, from one to five? One being I'm very satisfied with this application experience, um, down to very dissatisfied. So that is actually a downloadable data field that the college gets, they can download it and they can also, I'm gonna show you that in the report center right now. Second question is, would you recommend this application to other students? Yes or no? Also a downloadable field. And then this text, uh, text box for comments. Um, I have to say a lot of students skip over that, but we do get a lot of comments. So every college, um, you know, for your branded application, when your students complete the application, they, they are presented with the survey and a lot of them take the time to complete it. So that information is actually available to you again in downloads and in the report center. So let's skip over the report center real quick. And I'm gonna sign in. So Mary kind of talked a little bit about, okay, great. Let's try this one more time, guys, sorry. It's the problem with things timing out on you. Mary talked a little bit about um, a user account. So every authorized college staff member who has a user account um, can sign into the report center. It is all based on your college's MIS um, code data. So you're not gonna see any, any other college's data, just your own. Um, and as Mary said, and this is kind of a live version of what the screenshots, um, all of the public reports, which are templates that we've created just for convenience for you, um, are in the repository. There's a few ways to get to all the reports. Um, you can click on the library. Now again, granted, this is, um, this is my user account. There's a bunch of other data in here. These will just be your reports and public templates. Or um, you can click on search results which is just another way to look at reports. Search reports page is really nice because you can also filter it down. Um, you know, other college staff users in your college um, will be able to share things that are open to them. So the public templates and anything you might create that you wanna share with your, your colleagues would appear in here. But you can say, I just wanna see what was modified by me. I just wanna see the reports. I just want to see the stuff that happened today. Um, so you have the ability to kind of um, filter down what's in your particular repository. Um, but these are all different uh, ways to look at basically the repository. So if you go to view repository and you get into this back end, you'll see, let me zip this down a little bit. When you get in here, you might see this blank screen. 
this folder column over here is the, the folder structure. You'll see your college folder at the top or your district um, folders. And those are just, um, you know, when you first get started, they're gonna be empty, but they're basically for you to store any reports that you create in here or that you might take one of our public templates and make a copy of it um, and then modify it. Um, this is a very robust um, system and we've, you know, we've, we've made it that way so that you can actually have access to creating your own ad hoc reports and you can take some of these public templates and modify them. So uh, Mary was showing you kind of a breakdown of the different um, reports that are in here. Uh, these are all in the public folder. These are templates that you can use. Um, you won't be able to, you can, you know, you can modify them here, but you won't be able to save anything in the public area. Um, you know, we've got permissions locked down, but you can always um, copy one in, save it into your folders, and then it's opened up for you to actually manipulate it and save it. So what I want to show you is that student satisfaction survey. And by the way, I'm clicking on the application reports folder. That is the standard and non-credit application reports. And these are just some that we have provided for you. Um, we, we're, welcome, uh, we're available to help you create any kind of report you need. Um, and also we'd love suggestions. Um, if there's reports that, that you feel like every college really needs, it needs to be a public template report, let us know so we can create it and make it available to everybody. So in this list, and you can see we've got, you know, citizenship, different types of citizenship reports, um, foster youth reports in here. There's a, um, some multiple measures reports, new applicant reports, um, you know, race and ethnicity. Way down here, there's a report called, um, so I created an extra one for today. There's a student satisfaction survey results without PII. I felt, I felt like for privacy reasons, we would look at that one um, that just doesn't have any information about the student other than their CCC ID. Um, in case you want to download it, print it, use it, you know, you're not worrying about privacy. Um, and then there's um, another version that does have some PII in there. But let's go ahead and click on, I'm just going to click on that report. So if you've never been in the report center before, there's a couple little tricks um, and sometimes you'll get an error message and you're not sure why. A lot of times there's, there's built-in filters. Oh, baby, is this gonna be a big one? Um, and you need to just be aware that filters are applied. And if you don't look at them and set them appropriately, you may be pulling in too much information or maybe the date range is set for something that's not appropriate or you know it's way in the past or it's, you know, depending on the, the filters that are built into these, um, you're just gonna wanna be aware of them. So I need to actually get at those. So bear with me a sec. Due to the Zoom uh, screen, I can't see my filter thing. Okay, I'll expand it again, but I've just launched this report. You can see the different columns. It's obviously, it's a table report. Um, you can see up here in the top, it's telling you how many pages of your report there are, and you can zip through the pages that way, um, or go to the end or go back to the beginning. Um, you can, you know, this is the view size. You can span your view or, or collapse it or minimize it. Um, you can search a report. This is to get out of your report. And then we're gonna go over these two really briefly, but it's to get this data out of here. Um, Obviously the save button is to save a snapshot of this report and you can save it to the folders in the report center or to get the data out of there, you have a lot of options. You've, you, can, you can get it out as a PDF, sorry. You can get it out as a PDF or an Excel or a CSV. And if for the purposes of this demo and you wanna get this survey information out of there, I recommend an Excel um, file or a CSV file. So I'm gonna jump in here. We've got a couple things in the chat um, asking about 
number of lines for custom reports and the limits that exist there. So right now, I believe it's set at 20,000 lines. And we know that that's a challenge with some of our larger colleges and districts and uh, depending on what a researcher is looking for or what a user is looking for. So it is something that we've been discussing in terms of what would be a, a better number. Um, so that is that is something we're aware of and trying to address. We know that it is a challenge. Um, and and so I just want to put that out there. What what often has to happen is you have to break the data down, run 20,000 at a time, zip it all back together. And we know that's time consuming. So we are working with our data team on the best way to address that going forward. And that's that's a really good point, Jennifer, because I think a lot of, you know, like one of the tips and tricks about using this report center is is People will create a report and they've got it all beautiful. They've got the data they want in there, but then they don't put a date filter on it. So, I mean, if one report has 20,000 rows, um, I mean, unless you're LA that has nine colleges or if you, you're a three college district, you probably won't bump up against that very often unless you don't have a date filter built into your report. Because if you don't have a date filter, it's going to grab every app that's ever been submitted for your college. And that's why it's hitting that 20,000 row limit. But if you build in a filter, and in this case, we put in a few. Um, Patty, I, we've, we've got a request. Can you back up and get to the filter again? So we've got yeah. a couple of people asking to see that again. Yeah, perfect. And, and also, we, I, I was going to show you, if time permitting, we do have some uh, user guide for the report center and a special one pager for using filters because it's kind of tricky. Um, the thing is, is so a report is something that was created, you know, like, you know, the raw bare bones. When, when I built this, I said I wanted this data. I said I wanted it in a table. I said I wanted it broken down this way. And I said I wanted built in filters. So um, if you don't build them in from the get go, um, you, you know, you can't add filters once it's a report, but I want to show you two ways to filter this. So this little, let me do that again. So this report right here, and this is the standard toolbar, this icon on the far right, I don't know what it's supposed to be, um, some kind of form, I guess, <laughs> whatever that little image is. This is the, and it's called input controls, I believe, um, but the, this is the filters. And these are the filters that were built into it by the by the report creator, which could be you, um, when you know when we when we first built it. And I don't think we have time to go over that today, but we can certainly have either private or group trainings. Mary is excellent at this. I'm available to help. We've got the enabling services team that can work with you one on one or in group. Yeah, so a couple of a couple of points there we've got some questions in the chat. So, I have gotten a couple direct questions about um, specific needs in terms of can we get fill in the blank this type of student for this date range and and can somebody help walk me through that? The answer is yes. Um, we're actually going to show a uh, an email address here in a few minutes that will get you direct support to assist you with that and um, be able to walk you through that. I know it's, it's going quickly and we've, you know, we've got buttons that are hard to see on the, sh the screen share here. So we, will, we do have that option available. Mary is um, always happy to assist with those kinds of questions from our, our colleges. Um, so in terms of if you have a specific group of students and you want specific information, we can help you with getting that filter, or um, I'm sorry, the report set up if one doesn't already exist. Um, additionally, there are questions, Patty, around um, can is the student satisfaction report, do we have a way to filter for non-credit students only? And I know this might be a tricky question because our standard app and our non-credit app are actually tightly linked. Um, so is it possible for the student um, satisfaction yeah. survey to be filtered for non-credit? Yep, yep. So um, this one isn't, but, but all, you know, if we had another 20 minutes, I could show you how easy it is to go into the, you know, so you're going to see terms in the report center that are views and reports. And, you know, this is, the, this is a third party uh, product from Jaspersoft. It's robust. It's great. It does everything. Um, but, you know, uh, those are their terms. Um, and I'm not talking about view something. I'm talking about what they call the 
I just call it like the raw report generation when you're you're telling it what field you want and how you want it laid out and whether you want a pivot table or a chart or a table that's what they call a view and those are you know for every report this one right here let me close this for a sec you know the the one that i used this report sorry there's a view that a complementary view that i started with so I built it all in that view. And then once I got it where I wanted, I said, save as a report. Um, the, you know, the differences are, is you can't really get the data out of a view very easy. You can get it out of a report super easy. Um, so these are things we can go over, but all I would have to do to add a non-credit filter on this is go into the view, find that field, because there's a few different ways that we can, we can identify a non-credit app from a standard app. There's, a, there's actually a data field called non-credit and it's either true or false. Um, and also the confirmation number, this, in fact, we've got a field on here, confirmation number. Um, those of you who are using the non-credit app, you might know that, come on you, um, what's going on here? Why is it doing that? Here we go. Um, let's see, let's go this way that the non-credit applications have a little prefix to in the front of their um, confirmation number. Like confirmation is system generated. Every time an app is submitted, that's the number of that application. Uh, the non-credit, so if you the student comes in through the non-credit URL, that non-credit field goes true. And then the non, and, and then the confirmation number has a little NC dash and then the number. Um, so it's just that there's a couple ways you can easily identify a non-credit application um, without even, you know, looking at that non-credit field itself. Now, it looks like we might not have any in this particular breakdown. Um, and it's possible that I'm just, I'm, you know, showing a subset um, and this college doesn't have non-credit live. So that's probably why. So you'll note from the three columns to the right of the CCC ID, those associate with the three questions that we were talking about. Um, the experience rating, the numbers line up with each of the options that a student sees, uh, satisfied, dissatisfied. Uh, the recommendation rating is a yes, no, yep. either or. Um, and then the comments, as Patty said, not everybody leaves comments. Um, some of them, when you look at filtering them and utilizing them to see if any keywords come up, you'll notice that you know, spelling is also an, an area uh, to be aware of, using alternative spellings for some of the words, uh, things like college being spelled with an A and um, some of those other kinds of things when you're, when you're searching on things just to be aware of with regards to the comments. So once you have the report and um, you're getting ready, you wanna be able to export it, I know Patty was looking at filters, you can filter it and uh, view it on the screen, but then to export it for use, um, there's an additional process that you can go through. Yeah. And, and again, and I'll show you that I've, got, I've actually got the export already to just show you, but the filters too, you know, if you want to just see like, so the experience from one to five rate it, if you just want to see the ones or, you know, which is, this was great. Or if you want to just see the, you know, the fives, you know, like, how many people said that they really didn't like it or, you know, they wouldn't recommend it. Filters are built in so that you can, you know, bring it to, I just want to see the fives. Um, so you can build fil filters in based on any data field in the whole application. You can have a filter for, which I don't have here, you know, how many first time, um, you know, if the enrollment status is one, it's a first time in college student. They've never applied to college before. What did they think of this? Um, and that's a filter you can easily add into any report. Um, this one, you know, if you wanted to see minors, um, I put in a birth date is on or before, um, you know, so you can kind of set your 18 and below. I mean, it's the beauty of this is that you can cross check or filter anything, any application. Um, you can look at the data, um, you know, and measure it against any other data field. Let me, um, just for the sake of time, because we could go on and on with this, um, if I wanted to get this information out and take a look at the comments, like nothing showing up here because this is a subset 
of obviously there's 461 pages here. Um, but let's say I export it. I want to take a look at those comments. Um, you know, it'll export to Excel and then you can upload it into Google Sheets or you can just, you know, look at your Excel sheet or a CSV. Um, so I've got my, you know, my experience here, my, my recommendation column, all the comments that I got out of there. And then at that point, you know, we were going to show you how to build a word cloud and we can still do that um, just to kind of get an idea of like how many of all these words, you know, what was the number one word? Um, and in fact, uh, you know, there's free word cloud programs that you can just grab that column of text, come into a free word cloud program and, and paste in, just paste in your text right here and it'll build, um, you know, this is the one I built yesterday for this. And you can see easy is pretty big. Um, and typically we've run um, statewide reports from the student comments for presentations at conferences and those kinds of things. And easy tends to be the, the largest word. Um, but again, these are students who've made it through the application and submitted in this case. Uh, and so the other thing you can do is pick out some of the words that are not necessarily uh, the, the positive ones, like yep. easy and simple, so. Right, yep. And, you know, that's a good point too. I mean, they made it through the app and they took the time to leave a comment. And, and believe it or not, you know, I've been doing this for a lot of years and, you know, you've got that percentage of students that are the squeaky wheels. Right, it's like they're going to take the time to leave a comment because they're mad about something. But uh, you know, really, realistically, the vast majority leave good comments. It's amazing. So I mean, I'd be, I'd love to hear what your students are saying um, at the end of your application. Um, I we strongly encourage you to run that report and check it out. Um, so to, to Francis's question in the chat, if a student says this was not easy, um, it could pop up as easy as a separate function from not. Um, so that's something, you know, when you scan through the data and um, look for combinations of words, the way the word, word clouds work is count on individual words. You can tell it there are some controls that you can put in depending on the program to be able to, to batch words together depending on what they are. So, you know, I played around with it a little bit myself and I've actually taken spaces out between some combinations of words. So they appear together, um, but it, it varies depending on the word cloud program. Yep, yep, exactly. Good point. Jennifer, any other questions before we move on or um, what, do, what do most people wanna see? So I think one of the things that I wanna bring up is the fact that um, for some of you, you've, you've been with the system for a number of years and you know that we used to have a, a CCC apply workshop once a year, uh, typically in the spring where we would um, offer up a day of updates and information and accompanying that workshop would be training on the report center. And it would be several hours worth of training to cover what we're doing here in this brief webinar. And so we know that there's demand for this type of training and we've been talking about how best to offer that up. And so um, as we move into a place where it's more and more critical to get the enrollment management types of data that are available out of this database, and now that we've done some upgrade work around our report servers, um, we will be looking at doing some report center training so that you can sit down and walk through and log into your own um, access to the report center, walk through with um, direction usually from Mary and Patty on um, running reports and you can do it while they're doing it so that you can get the hands on and the visuals. So we are looking at bringing that back. Um, the, the apply workshop for, uh, you know, this year, uh, we, we were not able to schedule it prior to the shutdown. And so we had looked at other options and we, we do understand the importance of having this information out there and readily available for everyone. So for now, we're offering kind of one-off conversations and small group trainings, but we are looking at some larger opportunities so that you get that hands-on and can ask questions and, and delve into the details of what you are specifically looking for. Yep. 
So Jen, you you tell me um, if you want me to keep going or you want to turn it over to Mary. Yeah, I'm going to jump back to the deck here. We've got a couple other things um, that um, we can cover here. Let's see. Let me get back to my shared screen. Um, so uh, we have, Patty, there was a request for the apply non-credit URL link that you mentioned. Um, if that's something that you can share in the chat, um, that would be great. Let me go ahead and share, I've got everything loaded. Um, get this going. So as, as was mentioned, um, we've got the questions that come up. The numbers that you saw in the report center equate to these answers in the data dictionary. It, it matches it. The survey is not required. It is optional, optional as we said. Um, report uh, export options are here. You can do keyword searches and create the word cloud. Um, we've got some screenshots here in the deck that will be shared out. So other than student comments, what do your college's numbers look like? Application counts, as I said, our application numbers system-wide are up, but enrollments are down. So what, are, what do they look like? How did they look last year? Um, what, how are we progressing in terms of time year over year? And um, you know, how can we leverage the data that we do have towards some type of, of um, ideas for how to move forward for not only spring now, but fall 2021 is where a lot of people are focusing. So we wanna be able to help you with getting that information. A lot of these reports by term, by date range are set up for easy access. And um, the next one is the time to completion. How long is it taking applicants to complete and submit an application? And um, our report shows the time it was started and the time it was submitted. Um, there is some re calculation required between the two to see. Typically, um, when we did a statewide analysis of time to submission, it was 14 minutes. Um, and I know that anecdotally, it's been, you know, it takes two full days to complete the application or it takes two hours. Um, it's actually 14 minutes, um, accounting for outliers where people take and um, they start the application, they go away for a day or a week or a month and come back. Um, taking out some of those outliers takes about 15 minutes um, and there are so there are things that you can can gain um, in looking at some of this data the the last thing i want to cover um, and i know it's been out there but not widely we still get some questions about whether in progress data is available is in progress data is available and for those of you who've been part of the apply conversations for many years there were always questions about why can't we deliver in progress data um, and there was pushback and we finally got clearance to do it. So in the spring, we launched our in-progress data report so colleges can follow up with potential students to assist with matriculation. And so all of this, this is available. We're gonna talk a little bit more about in-progress data, but I will go, go back to some of the comments in the chat. Um, spam numbers uh can be filtered sometimes you'll notice that when you pull a report there are some obvious spam things that you can you can filter for um, and so we're working on how best to clean to not put spam into the data uh, warehouse going forward but that's a larger conversation around the fraud filter efforts that have been ongoing which i'm sure all of you are very aware of um, or if you have questions you can reach out with those um, the the resources available for being able to do that are under development and Mary just um, as she said for an ESAL thank you so much we've been our team has worked really hard in terms of major improvements just the last two years um, there have been some significant changes to the flow and um, looking at all of the the questions and and how to use branching logic to change the the process. Um, the CCC apply guide, uh, we have the data dictionary and we have some other resources available. Um, we do have some links from the deck that you'll get copied on, um, but with um, if Patty or Mary, if you could link to um, those resources in the chat so people can have them right away. Um, we Our public documentation page for apply is a wealth of information and um, maybe we can just provide that link as well. Um, and Cassie, I'm gonna, 
ask, um, in terms of filtering out the spam, Mary, I think you said it's easy to filter out. Can you speak to Cassie? Um, she's asking if it's easily filtered out by a regular user. So yes, Cassie, um, there are two, three actually main spam filter numbers. A three is an identified by the spam filter as a spam. A five is a confirmed spam by somebody at your college. And a six is a application that was identified as spam and a college person has said, no, this is a real application. So any of the reports that you want for uh, submitted applications, if you filter them by this, you know, I don't wanna see any threes and I don't wanna see any um, sixes, then you can have just the applications that are submitted as non-spam. Does that make any sense? Did that, did that clear that up at all? What is that group's name? What does that mean? Yeah, so um, so Patty put the, the report center guide um, in here. The, the spam, the fraud filter, oh, so, so Mary, what she's asking is in the reports, what is the, the data title for the spam codes? Fraud status. Fraud status. So it would be fraud status. You would add a section for fraud status and select which ones you do or don't want to include there, Cassie. Right. There's actually um, configured spam reports that you can see exactly what that what those codes are. And you can modify those reports for your college based on removing or adding spam filter status numbers. So yes, yeah, Cassie, it looks like you've got that right for, for fraud status. Um, Patty has also put the link in for the public documentation for CCC Apply. As I said, that's a great resource, whether you're looking for a data dictionary or you know, what does the most recent update look like? When's it coming? Those kinds of things. Um, to finish out some of our available reports, um, we'll talk a little bit about the in-progress application data report. The, here's a link to how to find the in-progress app in the repository, as was demonstrated. The information includes the last 30 days for applications not submitted and is a partial set of the data fields that a student has completed. And you can filter, and that includes name, address, phone number, email for contact. So you can filter those by term and application start date. And colleges have started downloading them for use in a variety of ways. Some have CRM tools, um, client relationship management tools that they are using for automated messages and ongoing feedback where the tool tracks that over time. Um, some colleges during the closure, they had on-campus staff who would normally have interacted with students. They used the in-progress application data to reach out directly to students to find out how they could provide assistance for completing the application. So it, it's really dependent on your resources and your intent in terms of, of turning over that data into um, completed applications. That is all also available to be exported to Excel or CSV. And you can set that up as a recurring report that can be emailed to you. Um, we've had, um, Mary has presented this in a couple of different places, but you can schedule a report to be sent to you. Um, here's a screenshot of how you get scheduled uh, and get that set up. You can have it sent to multiple email addresses on a, on a um, cycle that you select. And so that information can be sent to you on a, on a regular basis for follow-up. So this is something that the, marketing and communications team at the chancellor's office has been out talking about. So you may have heard from your public information officer or your marketing team about how to access that. Um, because in some cases, they were directed to go to um, internally whoever had access to the CCC Apply Report Center. So this is all part of a global effort to reach out to students who need help through the application process um, and, and just maybe need a little additional support. So. This is now available. It's been available since um, mid spring and we've been promoting it over the last few months and we hope that it's useful for colleges uh, as as our numbers um, dip and we want to be able to serve as many of those students who are interested as possible. Um, and again, if you have questions about getting this set up, um, you can reach out. We'll have that email address here in a couple of slides. 
tips and recommendations, always use care when handling personal, identify, personal, personal identifiable information or PII, which is much easier to say. Um, you always want to run the non-PII version uh, of a report that's recurring. You never want to email or print the PII data, black it out before sending or printing, and then add restrictions to local folders containing that data. So there are administrators for each college who control who has access to the report center, and we just want to make sure that our data is secure. As I'm sure many of you have heard, we've had a number of attacks on our colleges seeking data and uh, you know apply is one of the biggest repositories of that data so we want to make sure that it stays secure and we're using best practices around securing pii so re the resources that we've talked about a little bit today and uh, the links have been um, put into the chat are here the links will be live when you get the deck it's the report center user guide that patty posted in the chat the student satisfaction survey report slides um, are a work in progress that's coming. The in progress application data report FAQs document and the CCC applied data dictionaries have been posted there as well. Um, Anthony, to your question, are we blocking certain email domains that are known to be spam? Um, while we don't post publicly which domains those are, um, because bad actors tend to take advantage of that when we do. Uh, I will say that we have been analyzing our team with our fraud filter and our Amazon Web Ser Services team has been doing a significant level of analysis on those domains for a number of months now, and we have been blocking as needed. Um, we, if you see something and you want to check and make sure we are aware of it, please feel free to reach out and um, We've actually come come up with a number that we weren't aware of from um, from our colleges directly and exactly as you're saying what you think they're using the the fraud filter or the, the fraud applications for that's helpful as well. So when we <coughs> as we work through the fraud filter, it's a constant uh, constant work in progress. We are um, we're learning something new. I think about every week. We had one one college who suddenly we're getting. 99% of the bounced emails for the entire system. We had to work with them directly to get that fixed and uh, change some of the, the internal structures of the fraud filter um, and some of the college's processes. And so we, we are reliant on all of you to help with the, the fraud issues. If you're interested in our fraud filter, spam filter subcommittee to provide some of that feedback, if you feel that you're getting different populations maybe than some of the other colleges and you want to make sure they're covered, you can reach out to our product manager. Um, and uh, we have that subcommittee that will be meeting in the early spring. Um, so here is our report center assistance. If you contact our support team using staff support at openccc.zendesk.com, you will be able to, that will open up a ticket that will get you help uh, where you're needed or where it, it is needed, whether that's setting up a specific report, getting access to the report center. Um, if you have a specific question or you're, you've come up against a wall in the, in the report center, um, then that's the best place to start. That usually, that goes out to our support team and the person who's available first will be able to assist you. Um, thank you, Mary, for posting Jane's email in the chat. Can, can you also post the, the staff support email address so that people can copy it out of the chat if you would? Also, we want to make sure that you're signed up for general information and announcements on cccTechnology.info. That's our, um, we, we refer to it as vanilla forums. That's our provider of our uh, support for both faculty, staff, and then our student site is cccHelp.info. But make sure that you've got an account set up and that you're tracking on our announcements and general information. Subcommittee that you can request to be part of. Um, we can, after we verify that you are um, a faculty or staff from the system, you can get an invitation to that subgroup as well for specific fraud filter updates. And again, that's a Jane Linder email. Um, and so Patty and Mary, thank you for posting those uh, links in the chat. So please feel free to reach out with questions if you need assistance with reports, those kinds of things. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Jane now, our, our product manager. Her email address is here on this slide um, to talk a little bit about what else is going on with Apply right now. Jane? 
Yes. Um, so this webinar is very timely. We are releasing into production our latest uh, release of CCC Apply. This is the standard application 6.8.0. Um, the international app has a minor update too I can talk about as well. Um, this is happening this Friday, starting at 5 p.m. So it's after hours. There will be a maintenance message displayed for students who try to access our production version of CCC Apply while this is uh, going on. The downtime should be relatively minimal. Um, and so, uh, you know, once, once students get that message, they can certainly get back on uh, Saturday morning or later Friday night and continue with their application. Um, we're going to be pushing out updates to the standard application to address um, new options for special uh, adult school, special admissions um, to college. So that is changing that education area will change with some different uh, options there. Um, we are also supporting an international application link to MyPath. Right now, the standard application has this where on the confirmation page, uh, those colleges who have MyPath to um, assist students with other onboarding tasks, uh, they, it has a, you know, you can put a, a custom uh, description on the MyPath link that says continue your journey at, you know, whatever college. The students can click on that and then they can get into their MyPath account that's already been seeded with the information we've collected from their application and they can have advisor cards that tell them what to do next. So that is on the standard app. It's with 6.8, it'll also be included uh, for international uh, application students also. We did a lot of deployment and infrastructure enhancements. So our deployment has been very smooth and a lot faster than it has been in the past. Uh, there'll be a lot uh, less downtime for our students as a result. Um, we had a UAT, which is a user acceptance training last week. Um, we had um, staff and students uh, hitting this the pilot version of CCC Apply 6.8.0. It was a good verification that it was a solid release. We found uh, one minor bug in the education section that's been fixed. Um, and we got some really excellent feedback in general on the application. So uh, for those of you who would like to participate in these user testings uh, for future releases for 6.9, which is going out in the spring of next year, um, you know, reach out to me. Uh, you have you can see my email address here, also posted in chat. Um, also, as um, Jennifer mentioned, um, if you want to get onto our spam subcommittee uh, private group on vanilla forums, uh, that's another place where we talk about uh, things that impact our student application workflow. Um, and also, vanilla, vanilla forums in general is where we post all of these releases um, and information about what downtime is happening on what products. Thank you, Jane. Um, I, I want to touch on a couple things that Jane mentioned. Our deployment and infrastructure enhancements that are mentioned here on this slide and the fact that our downtime going forward for releases will be um, a significantly shorter window. So in the past, apply, uh, uh, apply production releases have always been slated for Friday evenings at five o'clock. Data shows that students, lo and behold, they're not applying after five o'clock on Fridays. And uh, the only other time that is as low as that is Sunday mornings. Um, but we will continue to release on Friday afternoons uh, starting at 5 p.m. But in the past, our apply window has been upwards of eight, 10 hours of downtime. And as we've changed our deployment model and infrastructure, we've actually reduced that significantly. Um, my path, as an example, we had a release um, for my path that last week took about four and a half minutes. Um, and we are moving towards some of our en uh, enhancements, including the, the ability to go with zero downtime. So depending on what the change is, for those of you who've requested changes to your logo, as an example, we would be able to do that in a zero downtime scenario where we would be able to do it much more quickly and uh, efficiently and not have to wait until a major release. So all of that effort has been ongoing by our development team and we've been making great strides on that front. So watch for announcements coming up where our, our release window is getting shorter. And so we're doing that very intentionally. Um, if you have any questions about this release, feel free to reach out to Jane and sneak peek, our spring release is gonna be big. It's gonna be real big. We're gonna totally overhaul OpenCCC and the account creation process. I'm not sure if all of you have heard about that. Um, we're changing the uh, way that a student creates an, or an account and it gets a CCC ID. We're streamlining that pretty significantly. Um, that will all feed into updates with Apply and MyPath to accompany those changes. So watch for that. We're going to be doing some significant uh, user acceptance testing and communication around those releases to come in the spring. So the team's busy working on that. 
And uh, you'll start to hear more about that when we return from the winter break. Yeah, you're not going to get away from us in a hurry. We will be having another webinar, webinar on those changes. We're going to try to roll that out very in the uh, early in the uh, next year, 2021, because we want to give you plenty of time. Yes, so that completes our um, presentation today. We've got a, about four minutes before the one o'clock hour. If you have additional questions, feel free to post them in the chat. We'll answer them. But always also feel free to file a ticket if you need specific support. Reach out to Jane uh, if it's product specific information and uh, watch for announcements about that big release coming in the spring at cccTechnology.info. Um, otherwise, thank you so much from the Student Success Suite and the CCC Technology Center for attending the webinar today. We appreciate your time and we wish you a very uh, uh, relaxing winter break and the ability to un unwind a bit. Um, the recording will be prepped and shared out probably within the next few days. So thank you again and uh, have a wonderful break.